I've been getting this question a lot lately. I don't know if a lot of you are getting pellet furnaces or not, but this applies to the pellet furnace people as well as to people who have fire pits or fireplaces inside or out that have wood ash because the ash from a fire pit is the same as the ash from the pellet stoves. Maybe the pellet stove is a little bit finer and the reason for that would be because it doesn't have as much charcoal in it and you are using compressed sawdust to heat your home or shop or whatever the case is. Now, what I will say is it needs to be chemical free, ideally. You don't wanna be adding chemicals. Good news is the wood pellets are exactly that. They don't have any chemicals in it. It's a flax based thing that makes the compressed pellets. It's not chemical. People who burn in their homes, unless you're using one of those fire cleaning logs or whatever the case is, there should be no chemicals in that as well. So you should be good you would know if you're putting chemicals in, in both cases. So there are some main nutrients that we find in wood ash that would benefit our lawns and our gardens or our house plants. And then there are some things missing. So a vast majority of wood ash is made out of calcium carbonate. So this is obviously calcium, which we like for our tomatoes and peppers and carbon kind of put together. That is 20% of the wood ash itself. The next is potassium, which is usually around 10% or less. Uh, it can vary depending on the actual type of plant that was burnt in this case, but general range is about 10%. And then we get down to phosphorus, which is 1%. And then there are trace amounts of micronutrients, iron, manganese, boron, copper, and zinc. So micronutrients, obviously good in low doses, not good in high doses. So that's one thing we need to watch there. The one thing it is missing that makes it so that wood ash is not a complete fertilizer. And in some cases, people may reference it more as a soil amendment is it is missing nitrogen. There's no nitrogen in it. So does this mean you should add nitrogen to it? No. Synthetic nitrogen added to wood ash can actually cause ammonia gas. Yes, so that's deadly. Don't, don't do that. However, what you could do is mix that wood ash with a compost, whether this is the actual compost pile and or just compost, mixing it into compost before that is top dressed or somehow incorporated into your pot, pot of plants indoors, outdoors, etc., and so forth. So one thing about wood ash is that it is alkaline. Now I spoke about this in length and if you are in a prairie zone, you likely have alkaline soil to begin with. So the addition of wood ash in large quantities can have the opposite of the intended effect that you want. So you do wanna keep that in mind. Now, if you have an acidic soil, wood ash is a very good way to actually bring that pH up a little bit higher. So coastal regions, northern region, regions, uh, if you have a lot of exposed bedrock, you probably have a very uh, acidic soil. So wood ash can actually help you to change your soil pH. And the good news is it's incredibly inexpensive and you can get it in large volumes. All you gotta do is burn a bunch of wood and sift out the charcoal, of course. But regardless, that is kind of nice. So that is something to think about there. It is very effective in that manner. But if you already have alkaline soil, you might be doing yourself a disservice by adding too much wood ash to the mix. Now, if you have a fire pit and you have charcoal and wood ash, remove the charcoal. Charcoal in and of itself is a totally separate monster. Biochar, again, is different. I just did a video on that. So the charcoal you would want to remove, and if you wanted to use it in the, the soil, you'd want to charge it. We call it charging. And that would involve uh, sticking in the compost extension and so forth, allowing it to soak up the nutrients, kind of charge itself like a battery before placing it into the earth. The reason for that is because the charcoal, even the small pieces, will remove nutrients from the surrounding soil. And if that is in your root zone, obviously the opposite of what you would want to happen. So sift uh, it's a messy job. It is a very messy job. I will say that, but you want to remove your charcoal from your wood ash as much as possible. In the case of a fire pit setup, if you are using the pellet furnaces, you're in luck. You just get straight wood ash as a byproduct of using that furnace in your home. So there's four ways you can apply wood ash to your area. The first one being house plants. So if you chose to go this route, I would stay below the 2% by volume. So a small little bit is more than enough. So if you had an entire bag of peat, if you were to look at if it's in quarts or gallons, whatever it says on the bottom, you just want to do 
2% of that. You could go as high as 5 but I would be concerned certain species of plant may not react well to this. So I, ones I'm thinking of are things like calatheas, um, peace lilies, that sort of thing. They may be stressed out by the addition of wood ash, so I wouldn't go over that 5% shape or form, but you can see really great benefits from it. Again, you wanna make sure there's no synthetic fertilizers in there if you chose to go this route, so no slow release no liquid fertilizer uh, or that sort of thing. You would want it to be worm castings, manures, compost, that, that sort of jazz in the potting soil itself. So something to think about there, but it could be helpful. The next one is actually in the garden itself. So if you chose to put this in the garden, you wanna do a dusting on your soil surface and then you would rake it in to incorporate it. Again, there's no way to measure this per se, but a sprinkle. So I don't want you to coat, like you shouldn't have a layer on top of your garden. It should be a sprinkle, kind of like a sugar, like a powdered sugar on a donut type thing uh, on that soil surface. And that should be a healthy, healthy amount. Now, the time to apply this is in the fall right now. The reason for that is because seeds do not do well with this. We talked about this with biochar. There are some seeds that are incredibly sensitive to the burnt byproduct of trees. So lettuce and basil being, you know, two that were actually tested and showed poor results. And so because we haven't tested all of the plants <laughs> in the spectrum and the fact that the plants we have tested either show negative to no result, meaning nothing happened, we can justify applying it in the fall and allowing the soil and kind of wood ash to mingle and make friends prior to the spring. So don't apply this in the spring because you may end up with stunted germination. Very, very important. And the next one is the lawn. So this is the same as garden soil. You're gonna sprinkle and rake. If you intend to apply seed in the spring, obviously, uh, do not apply wood ash. But if you don't apply in the spring, you could just uh, uh, apply the seeds in the spring, then you could apply wood ash in the spring. So just keep that in mind. Whenever we're trying to germinate something, we wanna stay away from that as much as possible. But fall time is a great time to get that in the ground. The next one is compost. So compost is 5% by volume. Uh, again, this would involve just putting it in the compost whenever you are putting in your browns and your greens. So you put browns, greens, and wood ash type thing. Or if you already have a charged up pile, 5% by volume into that pile. So if you think, you know, this is 10 wheelbarrows worth, you can, you know, do the math to put half a wheelbarrow of wood ash in. And you know what I'm saying? So that's what you would want to do with compost. And that would be probably the best choice out of all of them if you ask me. Now there isn't anything to suggest wood ash is similar to charcoal and biochar in the sense that it helps with soil porosity or water retention or nutrient capture, or cation exchange capacity, that sort of thing. Only because the rate in which it's applied is so low, so minuscule, I couldn't see it having a very large effect on the surrounding soil space. And this is true for biochar and charcoal as well. Once we start getting up into those higher volumes of product, it uh, tends to cause quite a bit of damage to the plants. And the lower volumes, you kind of question yourself thinking, well, what is 5% by weight or volume really gonna do in a soil system? So, I mean, that's, that's why it's kind of iffy as to whether or not it does anything, but it can be harmful in large amounts, but it can be helpful in, in low amounts. So just kind of stick around that 5% range, sprinkle range whenever possible, you guys should be good. So I hope this helps you guys out. Hopefully you'll, you'll even have so much pellet. Uh, I know many of you have so much pellet ash laying around or fire ash that is gonna soon be blessing you with its presence here as things begin to cool down. And so if the ground is still uncovered with snow, then uh, might as well apply it, get rid of it in a good way. I thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, thumbs up, subscribe, comment down below if you've ever used wood ash, charcoal, butter, you name it. And if you liked it or not, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.